All right, hi everybody. Um, it has been a minute, I guess it's been almost a year since I recorded my last video, but um, I've been doing a lot of repotting and refreshing some substrate of pots and different things, and I'm getting kind of near the end of it. I still have some more, but I figured um, I should do a video just on to show you guys how I actually repot my pings or Mexican butterworts. And why not do it on one of mine and hopefully a lot of other people's absolute favorites, um, Lilac Lollipop. And um, I guess I figured I might as well do this update as well, just to show you how I kind of divide pings, how I know that I want to repot some pings, and then also maybe just a update to sort of the ping mixes that I've been using and what I have figured to work best. So I guess just to start off, um, how to know when to repot your pings. Sometimes it is subjective. Other times things like uh, the actual moss will get very overbearing and will actually start choking out the actual water supply to the butterwort. Um, but in my case, this one's more subjective. This guy has been doing very good. I've been giving him a lot of bloodworm fertilizer in the past few months, and I'll hopefully make a video on that shortly about how I have changed my fertilizing habits. Because um, I've noticed a few things with fertilizing pings, and I think I've learned quite a bit in the past uh, six months to four months. Um, but in the case of this guy, um, he's starting to grow pretty good. And I've noticed that some specifically ones like maybe this one and maybe this one maybe in the next couple of months they might start to push themselves out of the pot and then they won't be getting water to them now this isn't a huge deal um pings can divide quite a lot before you need to repot them but again this is lilac lollipop this is probably my favorite ping of all time at the moment and i want this plant to be look um amazing in the upcoming months and this guy looks great right now. I actually just had him on display at our local uh, Manitoban orchid show. Um, but again, I want to do some preventative maintenance to make sure this guy's looking great. And I also, I want to kind of um, update the top dressing in this pot as well. So um, I'm just gonna pop this guy off to the side for now. And I have two bins here and I also have a third. Um, just an update on my previous mix. Um, I've been kind of experimenting and I have actually, I've ran, I haven't been able to find uh, Qualisorb in the past few months. So I, instead of using Qualisorb, I've actually switched to using um, granite grit. Um, this is cherry stone granite grit. I use the 1 16th uh, mesh size. Um, you can buy this at agricultural supply stores. And I use this as the top dressing for my plant. I've been using less sand in a few mixes, um, but this one's still fine. This is still aqua quartz pool filter sand. I quite like this. So this is just the exact same mix as previous, but instead of uh, Qualisorb, I'm using uh, cherry stone granite grit because I can't find uh, Qualisorb anywhere anymore. And honestly, I quite like the granite grit quite a bit. So this is what I use for about the top uh, quarter of the pot. And then for the majority of it, because uh, fluval stratum and granite grit, it's pretty heavy. Um, fluval is very expensive. Um, I don't want to fill the entire pot with it because pings don't really have that many roots. They only go into the top inch of substrate or so. So the majority of the substrate is more or less the same mix. Um, this is still about 20% uh, water retention, 80% drainage. I'm using sunshine peat moss. And then it's about one part uh, sunshine peat moss, two parts perlite, and then again, one part of that cherry stone granite grit. So this is just my water retention in the bottom of the pot to make sure it stays hydrated. And then this is my good drainage in the top bit of the pot with some CalMeg from that fluval stratum to give them that good um, calcium because pings love that. And then for top dressing, I just have, I'm just gonna use straight uh, 1 16th inch um, cherry stone granite grit and this I've just been using to try to keep down a lot of the moss and the algae um, I love fluval stratum 
but it de- does tend to increase the growth of algae, liverworts, and moss. So this is just, um, it looks really nice as a top dressing, and then it also, you know, prevents that slime from building up. Okay, so into the actual potting. Um, sorry, these guys are just in here. I am going to upgrade um, this guy into this pot. Again, pings don't have a ton of roots, so it doesn't need that. But again, I just figured there's a lot of plants in here, so they might be able to spread out a bit more. Um, and they, I think they'll look very nice in a larger pot too. And that'll prevent, when I take these guys out to look at them, um, these leaves from getting clipped on adjacent pots. So more so a larger pot to just support the leaves in this case. Okay, so I'm gonna first uh, get this guy filled up with soil. So I am just going to fill this guy up with some of that mix. I usually do maybe about to here or so, maybe a bit less. You don't need a ton of that um, fluval mix. And then I'm gonna top dress to about here with the other mix. So I'll grab a nice pot, try to get some of the peat out of there so I don't get peat in my nice mineral mix. And then I will just scoop this in here. So probably, probably there's fine. Um, that's probably good. So I'll probably, I'm probably happy with that. And then I'm just going to put a layer of more granite grit on top of this. This isn't necessary, um, but I've just been doing this because um, I don't like algae and I don't like moss. So this will hopefully put the moss on delay for a few months. Um, and then if moss does sink its teeth into it, I can toss out this top layer of granite grit and I don't have to throw out my fluval stratum underneath. Okay, so I'm done with these guys for demonstration purposes. So I'm gonna put them back in their homes. I'm gonna move this guy off to the side, move everything off, oh, it's off to the side too, okay. I'm gonna try to do my best without getting dirt everywhere. Um, and I like to use just these little things. These have been coming in pots. I don't know what else to use them for because they're kind of trash for everything else. But it looks like I have about four plants. So I'll put out four for now, just so that I try to avoid getting um, dirt on their leaves. And for repotting pings, again, pings don't have roots. Um, so you don't have to turn over the pot to unpull them. They're only sunk in about the first half inch or so of the media. So I just get my tweezers in under the rosette like this, and I just kind of pop them out. In this case, they're all coming out. You can see they're only in the top little bit of soil. So in the case like this, ooh, this might be a bit tricky on camera. Okay. So it's just, they're just coming completely out of it. So that's fine. So, Okay. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, I am gonna get sand all over their leaves. Oh gosh, okay. So yeah, they are kind of delicate, they are kind of fragile. In the case of this, I think, I'll just kind of get my tweezers in here like that, I don't know if you can see, and I'll just kind of gently, gently pull. And that guy's come out very nicely. I'm just gonna set this one off, and I'm just gonna to try to clean this guy off. And I'll just kind of, I'll just kind of knock off that, that substrate any dry leaves, I'll just kind of pull off. Um, if I was smart, I'd have a water bottle on me to kind of rinse off this, but um, I don't. So I'm just kind of, I'm just gonna kind of pull the media gently off with my tweezers. And that's fine. Just kind of get as much moss off as you can. And again, they don't really have that many roots. So they'd probably be fine. And this guy's looking really good. Um, I've noticed, oh, sorry, I went completely off screen. I've noticed sometimes in my older mixes, um, sometimes they kind of have a large stem here. This is the ping stem. It's very small. Um, this guy looks pretty good, so I'm just going to leave that. I think that's fine. Yeah, I think that guy's doing great. Awesome. 
So I'm just gonna put that there and then let's go to another one. Let's go to this other guy that's off the side. I'll just knock off some moss, get that out of there. And that guy just came right apart. Lovely. And I'm just going to knock off some of that old media, get as much of that star moss out of there as possible. And this is another reason why I've been repotting everything. I have had this snail problem. Get that guy out of there. Definitely gonna throw that out. I hate snails. I think they've been eating the roots of some of my things. So I've been trying to refresh the substrate, try to get rid of all the snails. Don't know where they came from. But I think repotting and refreshing even just the top inch of substrate of a lot of plants has definitely helped out with reducing their numbers. And yeah, this brown stuff, I just kind of pull it away. Oop. Okay, well, now there's going to be dirt all over your leaves. And these guys are a bit more brown. Um, there's a bit more brown stem, so I'll just kind of pull that away. But more or less, these look fine. Obviously, these guys have been pretty happy. I would like to see more roots, but clearly, this guy looks good. So we're just going to put him back there. Keep going on. Looks like there's only a few more in here. Oh, we're already at 10 minutes. Just kind of gently pull that off there. Hopefully you guys are finding this interesting. I don't know. I tend to like watching repotting videos, so hopefully there's some value in here. Put that guy back on there. And again, the last guy. Just knocking off some of... I know it's kind of repetitive. So the kind of motion that I'm doing is I'm not kind of tugging too hard. I'm kind of more or less just kind of moving down. Oh, some roots came off. I guess that's what happens when you look through the camera. But it's not a big deal. They'll be fine. I guess that's where the water bottle comes into handy. There's another snail in there. Come here, snail. Get out of there. I think I got him. And if you were smart, you could wash them off with the water, but I think these are guys are gonna be more or less fine. This guy looks good now. And you can see that, like, again, pings don't have a ton of roots. I always tell people, don't freak go and you repot pings, they don't have roots. Because they don't. Okay. So those are my four pings that I got out of the pot. Close your ears. This might sound bad. Get all of this dirt out of here. And now I gotta just figure out, this is more subjective, how you kind of want to set up pings in your pot. I'm going to reuse the tag. The California carnivores tags are nice. So I think I'll probably do a similar thing. Um, I'll probably do like two and two. I guess if I put the tag here, I'll probably put the two big ones here and the two small ones there. And to do this, I kind of just kind of do something like that. I'll grab, I'll grab my ping. I'll kind of grab the roots and I'll kind of just kind of what's the best way to describe it I'll grab the roots gently and I'll just kind of 
go down into the substrate like that. And that usually gets them potted up pretty good. So I'll kind of just lightly apply pressure and just kind of settle them in. And then just kind of move the substrate around the roots and they're usually in there pretty good. So I'll just do something similar here. This guy has a little bit more roots, so he might go in a bit better. Kind of something like that. And again, once you kind of water it in, they'll be pretty solid. All right, I would call that successful. I didn't break off any flowers. I didn't break any leaves. I tore off one root. I think I'm pretty happy with the results of that. So now um, I'll just put this guy back in the tray. Actually, I might I might top water to kind of flush out and clean the media, but I might just pop him back in the tray. He might be fine. He's looking pretty good. Um, yeah, so that was a pretty pretty hassle free repotting. Um, sometimes there is a bit more hassle when it comes to dividing. Maybe I'll do a video on dividing if I need to. Um, other than that, if you have more of a plant that is in its succulent growth phase, um, what I would recommend doing is I'd pack down the media pretty good. Um, and then I would just kind of make a divot in the hole like that. And then you can just place the succulent rosette right in the center. If you have an issue where those um, sometimes pings will kind of form like a cup, and they'll kind of press themselves off of the substrate. What I would do is I would flip the ping over and I would just fill backfill the kind of um, umbrella center with media. Um, and I'd use wet media so that it sticks more. Um, so it's, you kind of uh, fill up the ping cup with media and then you just kind of put the pot and then kind of flip it. And then you kind of have a mound of soil that the ping's on. But yeah, that's... Uh, it's pretty, pretty easy. Um, that's how I repot my pinguicula. All right, that's it for the video. Hopefully I will see you guys in less than a year this time. I'm hoping to be maybe more active. Okay, thanks for watching.